All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. As always, I'm Andrew. And I'm here to give you an insight into the things that maybe you wouldn't know about us. Yeah, this is uh, a different one, I guess. I mean, to be honest, we call it padding in the business, you know, to us professionals, which is what we are here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We pay each other. In compliments, you handsome son of a gun. Look at you looking there. Your side profile looking sexy as hell. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to pay him back, that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The office looks nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. We'll move on. I'll take it. Yeah. Why don't you tell him? It's your, you know, as the ideas man. <laughs> right. Well, this one was just a very simple one. It was guilty pleasures. So we're yeah. going to talk about some of our uh, guilty pleasures. I've sort of done mine in categories. I haven't got that many, to be honest. I haven't got that many. And do you know what I thought about this? And there's a really good reason why I haven't got that many. Because I don't find many of them guilty. What they are is the way I I've interpret put them as it, more embarrassing. Well, the way I interpret it is, is things that you wouldn't necessarily go around telling people that you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I took that the same way, I feel. But um, I have I can tell you how many I've got on my list. Oh, wow. Um, and it's not many. I've got nine. Okay, I've got more than nine. So I've I done find it, it difficult to... I've done like anywhere between... I've done about five or six for four different things i did so about 20 or 30 music slash artists tv movies and then miscellaneous okay well do you want to kick us off uh yeah i'll start with uh music one of them is a guilty pleasure and one that amongst my group of friends i'm famous for enjoying <laughs> ah, yeah um, I know. Okay. and that is the fantastic george michael yeah, it's it's one of mine <coughs> and football correspondent Ashley Jones's favourite moments between the three of us. Yeah, um, we were on holiday together, it, sharing a room in sunny Tenerife. Um, me and Ashley were sitting on the balcony, just enjoying the evening as that as we were getting ready to go out in the evening. I'd you know, the day had got myself really looking down. clean and sexy in the shower. In the shower, and he came out, and the question he asked, and I, it could not have been timed. Any better than the way it went My down. phone was on shuffle playing music. Yeah. And he said, guys, why do people think that I'm gay? And at that moment, I mean, no word of a lie. It was a, as if his question had triggered the phone. <laughs> it played George Michael. And it was, um, call me good. Yeah. Call me bad. Um, your man or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. And he started doing this dance that I can kind of like, if you're watching the YouTube, you can kind of see it. And me and Ash just looked at each other in a both moment and just kind of looked back and went that. I was also just in my towel. In his towel, <laughs> dancing around to George Michael, and it was like I think, I think that that might have something to do with yeah. it. It was perfect. Uh, it was perfect. For other music artists, I put Busted. I was really into Busted when I was younger, and I've yeah, since been to two Busted concerts. And they made me Busted. I think one of the bands is about two or three that made me want to learn guitar and take up music. That's fair. I just really liked their music when I was younger. And they harmonise really well together. And that kind of feeds into one of my guilty, p- guilty pleasures. Mm. So I can tell you my musical guilty pleasure while we're here. Yep. Um, boy bands. It's not cool to like boy bands. No, I can understand it though. I'm, I'm partial to a boy I band. I really like, I mean, I like um, same-sex harmonies. And so Little Mix are one of the best around at the moment. Okay. I mean, okay, they're not, not they're, really. a, they're a three-piece now. And it's all very topical Although of I have whether you're team on what's Jesse been going or team there, Because my partner um, reads all the trashy magazines, not being horrible to it. She just reads like, hello, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. And follows all the rumours and stuff. And um, so I've, I have got an opinion on that. I had thought it's something we might discuss in the future. So I'm not no, no, don't do so don't do that. But um, I said, Little Mix do it amazingly well. They harmonise so well together. But boy bands, like, they just when they when that all-male harmony comes in, Fucking dig it, man. That's my jam. It can be beautiful. And I can honestly, th- no word of a lie, there are probably two or three boy bands that I can name that I listen to that you've probably never heard of. And I'm not going to do it now because it is a guilty pleasure. And I'm embarrassed to tell you, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. That's fair. Uh, one of the others is Phil Collins. I'm partial to a bit of Phil Collins. Um, I think it's because one of the first ever films I went to see in the cinema as a kid was Tarzan, the animated yeah, film. Yeah, okay, okay. And he did the entire soundtrack to that. And then obviously as I've got older, I've discovered a few, only a few, I'm not saying like, I know no. his back cat. I remember or. my um, English teacher and media studies teacher in A-levels. And he um, 
hated Phil Collins with a passion <laughs> and we used it against him so quite often if we didn't want to do any work someone would mention Phil Collins or we'd start humming a Phil <laughs> Collins tune and he'd great. just go off on one that was it the lesson oh, was gone wow. and to it was like I loved it by Phil I loved Collins. it who gets that triggered by Phil Collins it worked for us uh, it really worked for us another one is I went through a phase when I was younger of uh, being really into Frank Sinatra is that a guilty? Are you embarrassed about that? Because I like a, a bit. bit of, I like a bit of the crooners. At, at the time, like I used to, uh, it was when I was in sixth form. It was about a six month to an eight month period where pretty much all I listened to was Sinatra, and like, I'd be in class and you'd be allowed to listen to music while you're doing whatever, and um, people would ask me and I'd say like Frank Sinatra and they'd all like laugh and take the piss out. of Okay, me. yeah, but as a kid, but I don't know about as an adult. I don't think it's that bad to listen to Frank Sinatra. It's cult no, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, again, not his back catalogue. I think I had like I'd listened to Come Fly with Me and the way you look tonight and shit like uh, that. New York, New York. And New York, and there New York was, yeah. I could have listed off all of them when I was younger, but not now. Um, but yeah, that was one of them. And then another one from when I was younger, Avril Lavigne. Still think she's good. I don't know. Well. Is that again? Is that a guilty pleasure? I think for a, like it was when like because it was weird. I think the groups I mixed in when I was at the age I was listening to were not that alt rock. They were more punk into um, yeah punk rock or even Slipknot or like it was the heavier like, stuff. Cool, yeah, so cool like saying stuff. you were into Avril Lavigne was a bit like really. Yeah, it was like saying you're into Phil Collins. It was like oh, it's very mainstream, it's very pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like Avril Lavigne. I, I'm I, a fan I, of I do like pop music, um, but if it's decent, if that makes sense. Um, and the other one I put. Sort of a jokey one. I don't see why they're embarrassing, but Nickelback, they seem to have a really... Yeah, well, same as Coldplay. Um, Nickelback and Coldplay have this real reputation, and I don't get it. That you're not like a music fan if you like their music. I don't get it. I, I think, think Nickelback that, that Nickelback album with, like, Photograph yeah, and yeah. Um, actually Burn It to the Ground on another album, but that, that Nickelback, that's a great album. They've got some really and good I songs. And I still listen to that album to this day. Um, I don't blame you. It's a good album. It's a good album. Uh, so yeah, that was my artist. And what's the what's their biggest hit? It's not Photograph. It's um, oh no, it's uh, Rockstar. Oh Rockstar, no, there's they one of their earlier ones. Oh, how you remind me? Yeah, how you remind me. Yeah. Um, not an honourable right. mention for music. I don't know if you'd have ever heard of them when I first started going secondary school. My sister introduced me to a band called Puddle of Mud. Puddle of Mud. She hates me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's the only real Puddle of Mud song I know, to be honest, but yeah. And there was another one, I can't remember what it was called now, but yeah, those two songs. And I used to get taken the piss out of for liking them as well. Yeah, see, I was. it was one of the weird ones where I, I was kind of like, I never hung with a crew, a crew, I never hung with a crew, I think I can stop the sentence there, we would never consider ourselves a crew, but I never hung with a group of friends that were into punk rock. There was a group at the school who oh, was yeah. into punk rock, but I was really into punk rock, and I mm. was into punk rock before they were. Yeah, and yeah. so it was like I knew all the artists before they knew the artists. Yeah, I could never express it. I could never share it and tell everyone. That's fair. And then they're telling me, or I'm hearing about it, and, and I'm are, like, you don't even oh, know no, any I'm any like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but I like you know, I was kind of like, that's not my crew. It's not my place. Once I got into like Foo Fighters, that was the first time in my life I was sort of into something that a lot of other people. I think were anyone into who it. listens to the pod knows how much um, Foo Fighters mean to you kind of thing yeah but the thing is i didn't discover them until i was a teenager no I'm, i didn't discover so like one of the artists that i really that two artists that i really like and are arguably two of the biggest artists on the planet and i didn't discover really until i was i mean i knew them and i knew their songs um were oasis and springsteen okay and i didn't yeah, really I get into them until i was sort of in my 20s like to be honest and then i started going through and being like god these are such good well fucking i was tunes. introduced not? um to springsteen by a mutual female we both know i know who it is yeah yeah. but yeah yeah um, but again sorry we, we're off track so let's let's stick to the guilty pleasure stuff yeah so um definitely someone there i think for a for a a male, and let's let's face it, we live in a world for a heterosexual male. Yeah, it's because like Taylor Swift is meant to be quite like a. Um, you're not really. But I like Taylor Swift. See, I Taylor, like, Swift Taylor Swift. I can, she does a lot of shit. I like, can don't take get me wrong. But she does a lot of really good stuff as well. Um, see, I, I'm. I think I'm. My my musical taste is very much based off of what I like the sound of. So there was like a pop song recently. I think that's everyone's musical um, taste. You've literally just described. No, musical but taste. like. Most people stick to a specific lane, don't they? Like most yeah, I people, guess I'm I'm more like yourself. Um, it's like there's any. So like our friend Ash likes rock music, but I would say the majority of what he listens to is pop, R and B, that sort of thing. He listens to rock as well, but he's like it's more branched out in that regard. But like mine, 
it's stuff from like I like a bit of Slipknot, I like Bullet for My Valentine, I like punk rock, but I also like poppy stuff. I like Ronan Keating. I'll tell you the um, stuff that I've got on my like my um musical collection that probably is a little bit um embarrassing. There's some stuff that's cool. So like recently mm. from work I bought a couple of seven inch singles. Um one of them being um the Dave Clark Five, Glad All Over, just because of the connection. Nice, and yeah. I was like, I've got to own that on vinyl. That's cool. Nice. Um, and also, well, Otis Redding, my girl, because like, I l- absolutely love that song. Mm, that is a and, good song. Um, and even the B side is really good. But anyway, those are like cool, I think. that's c- I can I can say that, and everyone's like, yeah, that's I mean, cool, man. You listen to, to Otis Redding. But the ones I really like, musicals. Yeah, I do I've like. I've got a lot of musicals. It's weird. No, not a lot. I've got some. Like. For example, I don't like musicals that I don't expect to be musicals, if that makes sense. So, like, when I sat down to watch Rocket Man for the first time, I didn't expect a musical. You didn't think the biography of Elton John would be well, no, semi-musical? Well, no, because just before that, we'd all seen Bo Rap with... Um, um, Rami Malek. Rami Malek, thank you. And uh, that wasn't a musical. It had music in it, but it wasn't... No, fair enough. Driven. Okay, fair enough. So, like, I think... I just didn't expect it to like, but there's other examples where I've seen that. And the, the main one I can think of is Rocket Man. Um, See, Elton John is Elton John a guilty pleasure? So no, I, love Elton I don't John. think, I think Elton Goodbye John. Yellow Brick Road is one of the best albums um, ever. No, I don't think Elton John's a guilty pleasure. I think he's definitely mainstream enough that most people will have a knowledge of him and appreciate he's talented. I think he's getting on a bit now. <laughs> but yeah, musicals. I, I love, I've got quite a few musicals um, in there, and I quite like. I love Phantom of the Opera. I'll tell you now, John, I know one that's straight, that's up, a guilty pleasure straight actually. up at the top of the list that's definitely guilty pleasure. High School Musical. Yeah, I'd there's only that. One, I liked that there's one. There's only one younger. song on there that's not very good, and it's the one that she sings when she's on her own. And I'll be honest, I don't know the name of it because I skip it every time it comes on when she's walking around the school and being all forlorn and yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know where. But all the others are fucking bangers. I mean, belt was after belt. Breaking Free. Breaking Free, absolute, Get Your Head in the Game, yeah, yeah. Tune, um, Status Quo, to Stick to the Status Quo. Pop to the top. Yeah. I mean, these are absolute tunes. We're all in this together. Absolute tunes. Yeah. Um, start something new. I d- yeah, I do have to yeah, start something new. Yeah. And I'll tell you now, I, as an adult, I've watched not it. for a while, have put on High School Musical, the sing-along version, and you know what? Yeah, if anyone came in, I'd feel quite all guilty right, about I'm it. Gonna, but in the moment, guilt-free. I'm going to out one of our friends. Mamma Mia. My mate, uh, um, our mutual friend, sorry, I was trying to steal him for myself, Alex. Um, I mean, out him or He don't seems out to get him. a mention every podcast. I don't it's because I started doing it because he didn't listen and yeah. it just really amused me to um, mention him when he wasn't listening. But, but now he listens. And he used matter. to come around and play FIFA. Yeah. And I'd have like a stereo player in my room for those who might be cool. young. Yeah. Cool. And we sat and played the album to high school musical and we'd sit there and sing, sing the song along. and we would take turns doing the female and male Vanessa parts. Hudgens and, yeah, yeah. and but whoever <laughs> it was that sung on that yeah, for yeah. Zac Efron's part um, and who did he not sing? not on the first one what in the first one? not him it's not his voice not his voice oh no it's him in the second one and the third one and subsequently why didn't they have him in the first one? didn't feel confident enough of his voice in the first one I think that sort of ruins it a little bit. It's why when they did a, a get together, like a cast get together <laughs> on Zoom through the lockdown, and they all get together and sing the songs on Zoom together, <laughs> he wasn't there. And everyone thought, oh, it's because he's Zach Efron and he's gone on to bigger and better things, and he had to come out and Sorry, say. No, and I fair enough, I, oh, I sound so arrogant. I knew this before he said it, but he had to come out and say, well, there's no point with being there. He's like, because I didn't sing the first soundtrack, I didn't sing on it. Oh, wow. That does sort of put a little damper on it, on does it, it? Doesn't it? It does for me. It's still a tune. It's still yeah, tune, but tune off me and tune. Alex would sit there and um, sing the songs, play. There's nothing wrong with that because it's a fucking bang. And yeah, I know Mia, who always seems to get thinks she always thinks she gets a shout out. She doesn't yeah. get often as she don't, don't get mentioned as often as Alex. It's just a shout that. out of derision. She, uh, she has this idea of me that I just like sit and watch Mama Mia back to back. I think, <laughs> but like Benny and Bjorn are fucking top top songwriters, mate, and their tunes are tunes. <laughs> My favourite ABBA song was always Did Your Mama Know? <laughs> and I always think the first time I heard that was Johnny English. Really? Yeah. No, my mum yeah. used to have the uh, ABBA Gold album. Ah, yeah, it's an album. <coughs> oh, excuse me, my coughing. Um, so I used to listen to that 
Yeah, no, I like. Yeah, my mate, but also not those like mainstream ones. Obviously, high school music, but even the ones like sort of older, sort of like um. So I'm not really big on the sound of music. I mean, it's all right, but I'm not Never massive it. on it. Um, but the West Side Story is good. You know, Never seen it. I want to be in America. All that just tune tunes. It's um, uh, I'm trying to think. If there's like, oh, there's supposed to be loads of music because I mean, Greatest Showman is a new oh, one. That's, that's a phenomenon. Greatest that's on Showman's there. next level. Um, yeah, I just. I do like a musical. I've yeah, got to I mean, be honest. We, w- we went to see The Lion King together. Yeah, I've been to see a few musicals uptown. Um, and and I like... That one was of note, obviously. Um, yeah, was for obvious me. reasons. We also, th- we have this habit of finding romantic spots together in London. A really romantic. Like we yeah, went yeah, to yeah, see yeah. The Lion King and we decided to go for a walk near uh, Parliament. Is that Parliament Square, the little patch of garden. Yeah, next, next to, to it. it. And we ha- we literally found this spot by the river, just literally next to Parliament, um, sat on a bench with the sun going down it over the river. It was really Thames. romantic. And we literally both sat there and went, if we ever do get girlfriends, I'm going to bring No word of lie, though, I did. Yeah. Did you? I, 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 I took, took, I took a date up I there once. There. Yeah. Uh, my current I was like, we, were, we were up in town anyway, and I was like, I know a spot. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I did, and we tried to time it so that we get there and be there for the sun. Going see, I don't think we were there for the sundown, but I took her there and we sat by the river um, and had a drink. But yeah, like absolutely, I, I took her. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, we went to the, we went to see uh, Noel Gallagher and the High Flying Birds in concert. Yeah, Greenwich. And we went to Greenwich at the old Naval College, and beforehand, because we got there early. We sat again while the sun on was the starting to go down on the river. We've had a lot of on the river um, sunset moments, and it's moments. funny after that day. Um, I found it was my engagement story. My partner um, graduated for her degree, um, and her ceremony was at Greenwich. at the Naval College. Um, so I thought it'd be and knowing that it was a beautiful spot, really beautiful buildings, and she likes it there. I thought, well, I'll I'll propose there. So we go to London for the day, um, and we sat at the old Naval. We get to the old Naval College, and there's like loads of people, but there was nothing due to be on, and they were filming and episode of some period drama where a bloke was being hanged repeatedly. Oh yeah, over really and over romantic. It. Exactly. Yeah. It turned out we found out it was pole dark. So we were there while it was being filmed. Um, I think it's pole dark. Um, they didn't look over and think but it was I want this guy in. We were sat in on this wall just sort of watching it and I was holding the ring, the ring was in my pocket yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. just like I, I can't, can't do it, it here, man. Bloke so in the end, and we were going to see Michael McIntyre that night, and we ended up getting the river taxi, the Uber, f- yeah, yeah, the, uh, TFL thing, and we got that to the O2, and I ended up proposing outside the O2, but it was meant to be a more romantic setting at the old because no- I saw one myself. I'm getting engaged tonight. It's happening. It's happening. Well, I so said yes. I was going to do it on the riverboat because even that was we were on our own at one point, and that was quite romantic. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, suddenly yeah. this family got on and. Had kids running around screaming. I was like, I ain't doing it here. And in the end... Um, it's a nerve-wracking thing. Yeah, and in the end, I pretended I needed to get something out of my bag. So I dropped to my knee. Um, then put my bag back on. And then she turned back round and I had the ring in my hand. So yeah, super romantic, man. Sweet. It's sweet. That's right. I've just used this pod to plunk my romanticness to sort of claw back the misogyny accusations. Yeah, I mean, I think you've now got to go the whole rest of this episode without attacking women, though. It's going to be hard. Tough. It's tough. <laughs> um, and just, yeah. Okay, go on. So we've got another category. Next section, TV. Okay, uh, I think we might have one of the same ones. Or we, we I might d- not. I don't know. I don't think we will. Oh, no, we might do, actually. Uh, but the I've first got a TV one show. was uh, The Last Airbender. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking throat. Uh, and it's a sort of cartoon TV series. Uh, and yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the other one is Taskmaster. I don't think that's a guilty pleasure. That's becoming super mainstream. I love yeah, Taskmaster. Yeah, maybe. But I, I think, think when I first... I'd, I'd never heard of it until I'd, like my partner said it's funny. So I decided to start I, watching so it. So there's, there's like... um, There's about four shows that I will sit down and make sure I watch and that is one of them. That's fair. I'm not up to date with it. Shows. I like to... When I'm into something, I like to better watch the whole season. So I've left it at the moment. Uh, next one, I'm a big fan of TV chef Rick Stein. I like in, Rick Stein. In particular, two of his DVDs I own. Okay. And one of them is the Far Eastern Odyssey. Okay. And the Indian Odyssey. And the Indian Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. and I love it. It's just yeah, they're on Dave quite a lot. And I've got them on my Apple them. TV account, so like I'll sit, I'll have my iPad on, be having a cigarette or whatever, and I'll sit and watch. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of Rick Stein. That's odd, um, isn't it? I've never, I never picked pictures of Rick Stein. No, I'm a bit... I don't um, necessarily... I, I like him in general. 
But those are my two. I can't. I can't like. It's not very. Um, it sounds really like I'm cutting him down, but it's he's quite a messy eater. Oh god! And they yeah. leave that in. And like he's it's all not polished. Sweaty, um, it's not polished at all. It's yeah, not like yeah. a really and cool, like, when, sexy doing when it for makes, TV thing. When he makes like awkward comments, they get left in. I know, and, absolutely. And his awkward manner at times. And one of my favourite things was in the Indian one. They're in a, in a, in the street and they're mixing this great big curry in a great big pot. Is it a biryani pot? I, I can't remember what the dish was, but I do remember that. Um, they missed some of the ingredients going in because the crew went across the road to yeah. get a set yeah, up shot exactly. from across the thing. I've and watched I love it that. so many I times. I love that. Is it the, exactly is it the biryani? About, yeah. But I absolutely love that. And they will, and, he, and he had to say, um, we didn't actually get some of the ingredients going in, so we can't show you because the camera crew were over there I on the roof. Also, I love the idea of going to those places. I don't, I don't, I don't think I America could ever go or. to India because I think it would just be too hot and humid for me. But I love the idea. No, I want to go. I want to go. I don't blame you. It's a beautiful country. Uh, the next one is it's a uh, drama TV show called Brothers and Sisters. Okay. And it was a show. It had Sally Field in. Uh, is it Felicity Lockhart? Uh, Felicity. Is it S- Felicity? I swear she's got like a weird. Fo- it begins with a C, doesn't it? She's I married know, to she um, Harrison Ford. I don't know who he's married to. I she don't was know. Uh, Abby McBeal. She played like a TV lawyer. Have you seen? You've the seen Supergirl, haven't you? Yeah. She's the owner of the newspaper she works at. Oh, her. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. she was one of the other stars of it. Um, and I'm trying to think if I had anyone. Uh, Rob Lowe was in it, um, and it was just a nice. It was a show about five siblings, and their mum was Sally Field. They'd, and it starts with their. They've got this idyllic family life. They're all grown up, um, and then you find out the dad's not what he. W- what they all thought he was, and he dies in the first episode. Spoiler alert! Um, wow. And then it's about what unravels and comes out yeah, after yeah, yeah. his passing. It's like five seasons. It's one of my guilty pleasures. No, fair enough. Uh, the other one, I say it's a guilty pleasure now. It wouldn't have been a few years ago, but it definitely is now. House of Cards. Oh yeah, okay, fair enough. I do. I still enjoy watching it. I can't help it. Uh, every now and again, I just get this urge to watch him as uh, Frank Underwood, and I. I and I still enjoy it. I, I just find it desperately sad. Have you ever watched the British I one, the old one, the uh, original? No, one? I, I, it's on my list of things to sit yeah, and watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, but no, I haven't. Um, and then the last one for TV, and I think you might be surprised. Grand Designs. Again, is it? Yeah, I suppose for someone of your age, and that it is a bit. I like someone Grand of my age. Yeah, well, you're quite you young. No, the opposite. I think you're quite young. I think Grand Fair Designs enough. is a bit of an older thing. Also, you're 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 a young working class person. You've you're not watching it to get ideas for your own home. Let's be fair. No, no, I find I but again, what I find, I just find it fascinating from start to finish. I'll tell you the one thing I've noticed from watching it. So for anyone considering by uh, building your own home, whatever you think it's going to cost, double it. No, well, this is the thing, right? <laughs> not just not just a building home. Any building work at all. Yeah. You don't. You need to do two things: double the money, double the time. Yeah. Yeah. Every time, every time I watch the yeah. time, if you have the money, you can get away with. But if you're trying to get away with as small a budget as possible, you're just not going to get it done. No, you need. I mean, to there was the, one I watched where this guy left his family in a position where he hadn't finished the build and they were going to lose everything. He had no more money. They had no income. But yeah, well, I watched half um, of one the other day and they got saved the by some random local millionaire who heard about their story while in a local shop. And then offered to lend them the money to finish so the project. I, I was watching half of one the other day, and it was it was dubbed the most depressing episode ever. So he never finished the house. His wife left him <coughs> uh, with the kids, and I was like, I'm glad I didn't finish oh, it. Honestly, I'm glad I didn't. I, watch I can't that, remember man. what it was, but I, it was the, so they were they were building it like on a cliff face almost. Okay. And yeah, honestly, I had to, I had to Google it because I was like, oh, I want to see how it turned out. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, thank fuck, I didn't watch oh, it. I would not have been okay watching that. There was that. one, uh, this woman and her husband were designing the house together and it was supposed to be some super duper special house with like special features and whatever. I mean, I'm sounding really patronising there, but like, um, and then like midway through the episode, the husband dies of cancer. Um, so then, the Jesus. Bu- so then the budget drops for the project. Yeah, they've had a few diagnoses. And then, but the like, years. luckily the... Um, the architect helps her do a more toned down version that she'll still be able to afford. And but yeah, it was oh, like it always comes out of left field when you watch something yeah. like that. And he's a great host, like, for that, by the way, Kevin McLeod. Oh, I love him. I think he's brilliant. He's perfect. Um, he doesn't hide his just the right um, mix of skepticism yeah. and optimism. 
but like he balances when, it so you well. can tell when he's really disturbed he's, by what he's someone passionate, is. <laughs> but he's also skeptical. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then he's, I find like he's happy to be proven wrong. So like at the end of a project, if there was something he wasn't sure about, and he now sees it, if it works, he'll admit it works. Um, I got three TV shows actually. I've just realised on my list okay, of nine yeah, things. Go. One, Catfish, the TV show. I I went through a phase of being obsessed I've, with it. I, so I, I'm not obsessed with it at all, and I don't watch it often. But sometimes when it's on, it's annoyingly watchable, and that's always the way I've described it. I was really it. sad because I don't when I found out about Neve Shulman, though. What leaving? Uh, well, no, but it was why he left. I don't know why he left. I don't yeah, care. Sexual that harassment was it? Mm. Oh, sad. In MTV, he thought he was a big deal. I was going around mm. harassing women that weren't there. I mean, smart allegedly, to I, smart could, to I could be butchering that. But no, you've got to shake your misogynistic uh, image. No, but so it's annoyingly watchable, and you you That's watch it, it, and comes I, across like I that, hate it. When I, can I hate shit. it. I don't enjoy watching it, but once but you, you watch it, away. you've got to see the end. You've yeah, got to see what I the had twist the same is. thing once when I watched the Geordie Shore episode late at night with my parents. I was waiting for them to get back from a holiday, and they were flying in late. And at that time of night, the only thing that was on telly was that I was just flicking through channels, and I ended up watching three episodes in a row because you just want to see. I just. I got completely sucked in. I've never yeah, watched yeah, it no, again you do, since. You do. But um, the other, t- the other ones. So I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Okay, that's um, fair. I really like it. I don't know. Every year I do enjoy it. I think, and it's what it, what it is is what really makes it is the writers, the script writers on the show who have such a short turnaround. You know, they what they get mm. the footage and then they have a day, and obviously they've got to sleep and they've got to rehearse and they've got to do it yeah, all yeah. And, and that, and they've had a day to turn around a script and make jokes based on it. And I think. The, the script writing on it, the jokes that come from it, and Anton Dex's delivery of those jokes is just top notch. Oh, for me. And they, they amuse, they make it. Um, and, uh, and also, just on a side note, I think ITV handled. Is it ITV? Yeah, yeah, they handled Ant McPartland's. I thought that was all handled very well. But I think, to be honest, um, if, if both of them left and a new team came in, I it probably would wouldn't shit. watch it because it, be it, just, it just would lose that thing. Um, and I'm, then I'm not a big um, reality show fan. I'm not massive on them, but there's that. and then the other one is certain like kids cartoons. So like recently, um, within the last like six months, eight months, I sat down and watched on Disney Plus because I've been hearing good things. About it. I watched Gravity Falls, which is, which is essentially a, car- a cartoon for kids, but it's not. It's really clever. It's really funny. Yeah, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm like, mm. but I'm not going to go around and tell all my adult friends. Oh, no, that's fair. There's it's a show a I'd recommend. It's this cartoon. And they're like, oh, like one I of them th- adult cartoons, like family. Um, like, no, 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 a kid's Rick cartoon. Rick and Morty is helping with that though, because that's a cartoon. Equally, again, you're like, massive. but you're like, okay, oh, is it an adult cartoon like Rick and Morty or Family Guy? And you're yeah. like, no, 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 just a kids, yeah, yeah. a kids cartoon. No, but, but it's I think really it's good. Different. I think particularly people around our age, um, I don't think it's uncommon for us to watch cartoons. No, and I've got to give a shout out to Alex Hirsch who wrote that show. But it's not just that stuff. It's, <coughs> it's there's a few shows like that that are kind of like aimed at kids and stuff. And I sit and watch them, and I think actually they're they're quite good. I guess quite a lot of them are made because well, they're made from ad- by adults as well. Well, I so think kind of that there is an element of and that. also they know parents are going to end up being forced to watch a lot of this. So I do think stuff gets sneaked in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That they know will go over the kid's head, but definitely it's there for the parent. Um, do you have a, are you, are you another section? Perhaps? I've got movies. Uh, sure. Number one, I put Santa Claus the movie. Um, it's one of my guilty pleasure films. Sometimes I watch it when it's not Christmas. Um, there's something about like particularly when I was a kid I used to get really nostalgic about Christmas mm. and occasionally even now like the thought of like Christmas morning you're with your family kids are open presents everyone's happy um, and I just find the whole day I've like it means more to me than just buying people presents about the time of family and like some of my favourite memories as a child are from Christmas so it's a uh, and I used to watch that every Christmas Eve. When you say Santa Claus, are you? Is this a different movie? The Santa Claus. The with Santa Tim Claus. Allen, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So that's I love that. I have to say, um, last year I don't. Embarrassingly, I don't have that on DVD. But what I do did was last year, or the year Disney before. Plus. Well, oh, is it sweet? Because last year, or the year before, it was on TV, and I recorded it, and I went straight into the set and was like, "You do not delete that until I tell you to delete that." There is no <laughs> time lock on that. I will sit and watch that every fucking Christmas. Um, Every year, love it. Another Christmas one. I love the Polar Express. I don't okay, know. yeah. So I mean, their eyes um, are fucked up, though, aren't they? They're creepy eyes. I, guess, I mean, I've seen like it a couple of times. To be honest, it eyes. hasn't aged well in terms. There's of no life in those effects. eyes. But I love Tom Hanks. I like like. There's good music in it, um, and I love the story in it. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's fair and there's a there's a moment in the film involving a bell for anyone who's seen it um, that choked me up the first time I saw it. It's yeah, like fair enough. Uh, I can get that. I get that. Um, 
So yeah, uh, another one from when I was younger. It used to be sort of like a family film, and we all found it quite funny. Was the Princess Diaries? I haven't watched it. The Anne Hathaway yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Loved that. Um, another one is, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily it's a guilty pleasure, but I like um, The Big Short. It's a film I watch every now and again. Yeah, again, I don't know if that's a guilty. So um, for a fully a grown man to turn around and say I watch The Princess Diaries, yeah, I get that guilty pleasure. No, definitely. I wouldn't. I have. I don't the remember big the last short, time I, I watched Princess Diaries. You should. You should. Um, well bust it out. Another one is uh, it's a romance film, Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one with Steve Carell and. Uh, not name Ryan Gosling yeah and Emma Stone I just find that film hilarious uh, and another romance film The Lucky One which is a film with Zac Efron okay where he plays I a soldier d- honestly I don't think I've seen a lot of the films on that list if you read the list back to me and I'll tell you uh, Santa Claus the movie yeah obviously Princess Diaries haven't seen it Polar Express have seen it The Big Short have seen it Crazy Stupid Love haven't seen it The Lucky One yeah I haven't seen it yeah. which is odd because most of the time I've seen movies yeah, I mean, I'm qu- I, I quite like a soppy film. I like yeah, a romance yeah, yeah. film. I'm I'm into a rom com. Um, there's a really good one with uh, Kevin Hart and um, I can't remember his name. He was in like CSI or something. But it's quite good. Yeah, no, I think that's I um, there's no films on my list. Okay, so there's no for that. We can you can. I think all in mine probably now fall under miscellaneous. But um, no, that's fair enough. I don't know if the others had a couple. I'm not sure. Guilty. Princess Diaries, definitely. Dad, I mean, like I said, I haven't seen that film for a, a while. Fully grown adult but male, like, you can't turn around and say, you like when I go Diaries, to my friend Lindsay's, uh, our mutual friend Lindsay's with Ash, um, if someone suggested putting it on, I'd be like, yeah, all right. Do you know what I mean? Like, Is I it you that suggests putting it on? No, you're I like, wouldn't. Did no, you do that no, thing I where you're like, never do that. Like, I wouldn't do that. Where they're like, guys, should we watch a movie? And you're like, yeah, did someone say Princess Diaries? I heard. <laughs> did one of you guys say that? I think we all just watched the Princess Diaries. And they're like, no, no one said that. I don't that. think that we would ever work. And you're like, oh, should we really explore that idea? Did someone say, I'm pretty sure someone said Princess Diaries. I think we should. No, to be honest, most of the time when we go there now, it's horror films the entire time we're there. Um, so yeah, I'm not just saying that to overcompensate, it's genuinely the truth. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. You don't need to be like your double hard after back up the fact that you watch <laughs> Princess Diaries. Have you seen the Princess Diaries 2? Yes. Enjoyable still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First one's better, but is it was it it's got Chris Pine in it, it it's the not, second one. It's so. not Markovi or something. What's the name of the country she's the royal? Uh, I can't remember now. That doesn't matter anyway. No. Uh, in my head, I'm hearing Cavonia, but it's not Cavonia. Cavonia, the cough medicine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cough medicine that Ainsley and Harriet advertised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cough medicine with clout. Goes, Cavonia. Cough medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it definitely is. I want to look it up. You can pad for a little bit. Okay. Well, uh, I think Ainsley Harriet is a fan. I've, he, he's on telly a lot now. Yeah, he is. On I've telly been watching him on. The, my mum watches him on the Food Network. Genovia. Is that it? Genovia? Genovia? Genovia. Genovia. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. Crack on. Crack on, my man. Right, so we're now on to miscellaneous. I'm on to my last section. Sunsets by the sea. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a it's a gendered stereotype thing. It's like for a heterosexual male to say, or even just any male to say... Um, I love the ocean in general, to be honest. I, say um, I remember the first time I saw a sunset, and I was very lucky, so I was in Cyprus. Okay. And I was in a very, very fancy hotel. God, it makes these podcasts make me sound super rich, don't they? It makes me sound like I'm in the middle class. Your house has three floors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but all right, we don't live on all of them. What happens to some of them then? The butler lives there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's right. So I was in Cyprus. It's a really fancy hotel. I've never been anywhere as fancy in my life, and I probably never will be again unless I win the lottery or something. Um, and I feel like I've got to say that just to bounce it out. And be like, I'm still working class, Your mum has a walk in still wardrobe. working class, guys. You paid for that. I didn't pay for you shit. You and all the other clients. I didn't pay for that. Wow. I know, I took my own mum out. I just really to say I'm to your so mom. sorry, mum. The opportunity was there and I took it and I'm really sorry. He just took the opportunity to call you a prostitute. <laughs> oh, you didn't need to call it out. She could have just, you know, if she got it, she got it. She didn't, she didn't. But I'd just like to say, even if you were, I have too much respect for you and for Jake and for your husband to pay for those services. So you're going to fucking run out? You're going <laughs> to use and run? No, I'm not going to use them at all. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, yeah, I was, an, I was on a on a sunbed right on the edge of the sea. So it was like a, it was kind okay. of like up a, sl- it wasn't like up a cliff, but there was a drop. Yeah, yeah. Probably about 
20, 30 feet into the ocean kind of thing. And that probably only about yeah, 20 feet or so, 25 feet. And I was just out looking over, the, and the sun just went down over the horizon and thing. And do you know what? I remember thinking, this is so fucking beautiful. <laughs> and I remember going on Facebook, it must have been at the time, and like doing the status about it and being like, guys, I know this sounds super gay, but honestly, sunsets, sunsets are, are awesome. fucking amazing. Yeah. And they're so beautiful. Uh, right, what about you? Have you got any I've others? I've got all of mine are miscellaneous now, so I've got about five, I guess, that are miscellaneous. Right, well, to be honest, my miscellaneous ones, looking at them, are a bit shit, to be honest. I've put swimming, because I love swimming. I, like sw- I love swimming, I'm an aquifer. Um, I yeah, and I've done scuba diving and stuff like that. I like being in the water. I've done scuba diving in the, s- in the pool, it's not the same thing. I've done, it, I've done both, in the sea and in the pool. But I was a qualified lifeguard. Nice, I was qualified to scuba dive up to 15 metres once upon a time. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it like now. I wouldn't get in the fucking <laughs> the way suit, let alone. Uh, the next one is pie mash and liquor. Okay, it's just a little guilty pleasure of mine. I, tr- I got my partner to try it for the first time. Was recently. she a, was she a bit against it? Uh, she didn't like it. No, it's she a very acquired taste. She it is it a very shit. acquired taste. I find it very comforting. And I remember the first time I went greasy to spoony about it. I remember the first time I went to a pie and mash shop and they did the gravy and I was like, the fuck's this green shit? I was like, where's your gravy, mate? Where's your <laughs> Oxo? Where's your Bisto? Yeah. But it's quite, it's all right. It's quite nice. I like it. It's quite nice. I have my favourite as well. The one in Sutton's pretty decent. Yeah, I think that's where I went. I think, yeah. I, think I went with you. Yeah, I think me you and Alex went once. Because um, you criticised him for putting the chilli oil on the pie and mash. Did I? Sounds like yeah. me. To, to walk boldly you into were a like, place. And then I think he started putting salt and stuff. And you're like, Alex, why do you need all of that? Oh, it sounds like me to walk boldly into a place and start telling people that I know better about stuff that, yeah. that I've never tried before. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. I've got two more after that. You want me to rattle through a couple of mine? Yeah. Um, I like the celebrity gossip section in the Metro. I do like a bit of celebrity gossip. It is a gossip. bit guilty pleasure. I don't care about any of it. But I do every now and then if I've got the it's metro. It's fascinating to hear how the other half are living. I will lives. read about their feuds or, you know, them talking shit about their latest release or how they found themselves or they mm. found love or whatever the fuck it is. I do kind of enjoy it. It is a guilty pleasure. I would never say to, a, like I said, I'd never say to another grown adult, oh, I really like reading about celebrity gossip. That's fair. I, I do like. I like, like a bit of it. I do. gossip. I've got to admit. Um, another one ordering I've got two f- oh, I've got a few food ones actually ordering pizza and then saving a couple of slices for breakfast the next day <laughs> if I order a pizza and I take away pizza a couple of slices go on a plate in the fridge and that's breakfast that I, is a nice c- I can't get f- like if I order a takeaway pizza now I can't get through the whole pizza now so I've always got some left for the next morning before I used to like force myself I'd be like oh let's eat all of it but like yeah it's nice to have a bit it isn't, it's a really nice little thing um, I've got uh, another. I'll, I'll do my other two food ones. Um, soft day old poppadoms. Okay. Poppadoms. You leave them out, and then the next day they go a little bit soft. Okay. Lovely. Guilty oh, pleasure. Fair enough. See, I do like and that face that you just did <laughs> is why it's a guilty pleasure, and why it's not something I go around telling everyone. Well, like I, I've never known anyone want a soggy pop poppadom. Well, I know. I know from like my dad also likes it. Brother doesn't. Okay. Like I know that. Not what that is any mom? relevance to the thing. Uh, no, not really. That's fair. But I do, I like it. And then the other one, um, and I don't, I should say, I haven't really done this. Obviously, we've had the lockdown and stuff, and since the lockdown, I've gone on my kind of health kick. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to judge it. But I, one of my favourite times of the year is always the couple of weeks after Easter, and I can buy discounted Easter eggs and eat them for lunch at work. So I used to be, I used to love Easter eggs when I was a kid, but now I, I think they're such a rip-off. I know, but that's why I get them on discount. Yeah. When they're selling them off after the after Normally Easter. Normally it's a bum fight, though, when you go to those. Oh, it's never like I go in elbows out, knocking <laughs> people around. It's just, if they're there, I'll go into the supermarket. I'm like, oh, I'll have a couple of them. That'll do. Yeah, I find that's they never lunch. get marked down enough for me. No, not anymore. They don't get marked down as, no. enough, as much as they used to. That bothers me a lot. Yeah. But yeah, that's, a guilty, that's my other food, guilty pleasure. Nice, that's fair. Right, well, my second to last one is the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, I don't think you can really call it. It's definitely mainstream enough. That and it's popular quite mainstream. Enough. Um, but there's definitely still, I would say, a movement out there, maybe if not just in the media, but in the general public, of like trying to discredit him and definitely anti 
Joe Rogan. I'm a bit anti Joe Rogan. That's fair. Why are you anti Joe Rogan? Um, all the clips I've seen of him, I just don't like him. And yeah, I think it's difficult. Um, I like long form content. I don't like. No, no I get that. Clips. I get that. But if um, all if if all I've seen is those small clips, I'm not encouraged to then go and listen no, to no, it. No, no, that's full fair. I, I mean, I got into it. I think by act. I don't remember how I started listening to it. It must have just been someone I wanted to see an interview for happened to be on the Joe Rogan podcast, yeah. and that was it. Um, but I think from having watched quite a lot of him, in general, he's quite open. He's got a couple of like hot button, hot button issues. He'll be a dick over. Um, but no, in general, I find it quite like a therapeutic thing to listen to. That's fair. Yeah. There's one interview. There's one interview thing that I always watch, and I know I've mentioned to you before. I think I even said at one point I might have even said, "Oh, we should do that as like a promotional thing for the pod." What like the actor studio? No, hot ones. What's hot ones? Um, it's. Uh, I nearly did their intro. Then I'm, that's how that's how deeply ingrained in me it is. It's um, it's a it's a show where an interview show where they eat progressively hot hot wings. Oh yeah, and they yeah, get I've to about eight, YouTube. which is the bomb. Yeah, and it is yeah, it's a YouTube thing, and yeah. it just fucks people up. It's like hallucinogenic, and everyone who's taken it has always been like, "Why the fuck does that even exist? What is the point of that?" <laughs> and it's them trying to answer questions while their mouths on fire and their heads yeah, yeah, going yeah. all over the place. And it's really great. And he is a great interviewer, and their team is a great. I've never actually sat down and their watched their team it, are great at research. Nearly every episode, you have two moments. One where they go, "Holy shit, that is a great question!" Like I don't really know how to answer. Give me a second here. That's a great <laughs> question. And two where they go. Where he'll mention it and I go, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess um, it's to it's throw them off to make it even more difficult. No, it? no, and then they it's it's just a really good fun thing and watching people handle that and watching them get because they all get competitive because you get Ricky Gervais spoiler alert Ricky Gervais quits yeah. he doesn't finish it he's like why would I finish it it's just stupid yeah. um, and all the others are like but I can't and especially now you're getting to the point where they've got big celebrities on and they know other people who have done it they don't want to check and they're out. like nah see so and so did it and I know I've got to beat you know I've got to beat yeah, them yeah. so Mila Kunis was the late one of the latest ones and her husband Ashton Kutcher had done it before yeah and she was like mm, yeah I can't let him. Like lord this over, over me kind of thing, yeah. um, and it's quite good. They actually did a thing, so he was like, "While you're here, I want to fact check Ashton Kutcher's interview. Okay. I'm going to run past some things that he said, <coughs> and you tell me if they're true or false." And the whole time he's in the background, like you can hear him shouting every now and then, and watching her go, "That's bullshit." He might have told you that, but that's absolutely not true. Yeah. That never <laughs> happened. Um, but yeah, they're, they're the interview. I did the other, the only other guilty pleasure that I've got that I can think of is again, it's a YouTube thing. I quite like watching, it's a really niche thing. I like watching Americans react to British comedy. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, and I don't know why. I just think it's because it's comedy that I know and is obviously quite um, local to me. And there's obviously a lot of like references and colloquialisms and stuff that I really enjoy. Yeah. And the humour in itself. Do they miss a lot of it then? Some, but like quite a lot of them, the ones that, this is the thing, so I never really watch... I never really repeat watch the ones that don't get it or don't enjoy it. Okay. But the ones who really get it and really enjoy it, I do repeat and I okay. do watch and I do really enjoy it. I don't know why, I just do. That's fair. It's a weird thing to describe to someone. It's not so much like a guilty thing, like I'm embarrassed about it, but it's like, how do I describe someone that that's what I enjoy? Yeah, it's weird. I think the way I sort of took this episode was it was giving out information that the listeners might not already yeah. have. Um, so that's a nice little Oh, one. equally, if there are any Americans, by the way, listening, and, and we do have listeners we in America. We do have listeners If in you America. want to record yourself um, reacting to something, either something that we've said or yeah. just some kind of British comedy, and you send it to um, crossingswords19 at gmail.com, I would love that. Absolutely. Okay, I, I would sit there and watch it, and I'd I agree love more. it big time. It would mean a lot. Absolutely. Um, and my last one is it's another podcast. It's called Business Wars. Okay. Um, and it's a podcast, um, the guy's got a fantastic voice, it's very dramatic and he puts voices on and he plays different parts and um, it will... F Is it the podcast you secretly want to be? It's <laughs> Maybe, do you want a little to do bit, voices a and little bit and it's done by a company called Wondery and I think they're quite big with podcasts and online content and uh, they'll do a story based off of two businesses, so there, there was one on Netflix and Blockbuster. Yes, okay, um, okay, yeah, 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 I'm aware King, of this podcast. Like Domino's. And it's just really fascinating to listen to, um, to hear how companies were started and some of the dodgy shit they've done and chances they've taken and 
stuff like that. I mean, like anyone who doesn't know how McDonald's was founded, I absolutely recommend you look it up and listen to that episode. It's written like they're quite short episodes as well. They're a bit advert heavy, but you can just skip through them. You know, I no always problem. do whenever podcasts have adverts. Um, I literally just hit that thirty second plus button on my phone. Yeah, and I then if they're talking, I'll go back. I wonder 15. whether their advertisers find out that people are skipping through. Do you know what I mean? It's fuck them. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And yeah, that that's pretty much it for me. That's it. Either. No, I think that is it. I think. So yeah, it's interesting because I don't think it's a real insight for me into you because I feel like I know you quite well <laughs> and I don't feel like any of them were surprised. Princess Diaries was a surprise, but that genre of film was not a surprise. No, I mean no, the actual fair. specific thing. Um, no, I think I've I've always been into quite soppy stuff. But I'm I far more of a um, hopefully it'll be an insight to our listeners. Teddy bear than I am an aggressor. I, th- I would say. So. say. Hopefully, hopefully our listeners will listen and think, um, "Oh, I never knew that they liked that." You know, I never pegged them for. You know, yeah, I never I'll pegged. I never pegged in for a George Michael fan, I mean, although they should. I mean, the truth is, the reason we've um, recorded this episode is we've re- actually doing a double record today. This is the second of. Um, yeah, we don't often get a chance two. to do them. No, we don't. To be fair, and um, it's because Jake's being a selfish bastard yet again, and he's going on uh, on his holly bobs. Yeah, so by the time you listen to this, I will have been away. He would have been away and hopefully. come back. Hopefully, yeah. Touch wood. Although so there are a lot of people that I think don't want me to come back. No, I disagree. I think our listeners would be heartbroken. But you do, because if I, if I stay over there, you're robbed of the opportunity to murder me. Well, no, the thing is, if you die going to Canada, either in the plane or while you're there or on the way back, whatever it may be, I get to milk your death. Sounds. I mean, to be honest, the way you've gone in straight with the plane and the journey <laughs> there and back sounds very specific. Have you done something to the plane? I, I, I categorically... Have you fucked with the phalange? I've, mate... Is there a problem with the flange There's on the plane? There's extra phalanges on board, just in okay, case. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Um, I hope our doesn't even have a phalange. I hope, yeah, I, hope our, I hope our listeners get, I hope enough of our listeners get that reference. Uh, it's one of my favourite moments from Friends, actually. Yeah, what, when she goes, it was there's like, no such thing as, it, like, it hasn't got phalanges. Like, never... like, this plane doesn't even have a phalange. <laughs> oh my God, people, we need to get off now. <laughs> He's, by the way, he he is brilliant, if you ever want, he, in um, Community, he plays the Dean, and he is fantastic in it. Who's that? The guy who shouts, oh, this plane doesn't even have a phalange. Oh, really? And he's phenomenal in it. He plays this really camp, like, they kind of lean on it. He's gay, but he's not gay kind of okay, thing. Yeah, but yeah. he is, he d- properly does fancy one of the main characters. Okay. And he's always comes in, he always makes a pun to do with the word Dean every time <laughs> he makes an entrance. And he always he's always wearing a costume okay. to promote whatever it is that I've week. never heard of it. Well, Community. Yeah. It's really, it's Dan Harmon who did, um, who then teamed up with Justin Moreland to make... Rick and Morty. Oh, okay. And always, the way I always see it is Dan Harmon is like, J- R- Justin Moreland is like crazy. I'm just going to go out there and do, you know, when they do like the cable episodes, he literally just goes in the recording booth and says whatever the fuck he wants to say. Yeah, yeah. And I always think Dan Harmon's the one that takes all that raw energy and, and, and it tailors into it into a story yeah, and a yeah. show. Um, but Community, yeah, really. But I'm, a, I'm a fan of Community, I think. And I'm a fan of Rick and Morty. So. But yeah, anyway, listen, um, hopefully you've, You've learned something about us. Hopefully. And guys, if there's anything you want to tell us that's your guilty pleasure that get you're off dying your to get off your chest, just do it. And you can do so at Sword Crossing on Twitter, at Crossing Swords underscore podcast on Instagram, and Crossing Swords on Facebook. And, and always, you can find us on YouTube by searching our na- uh, uh, Crossing Swords and the name of the episode. And finally, at Crossing Swords 19 at gmail.com. Boom. And we really appreciate any subscriptions and stuff. And guys, by the way, we're good listeners. We are good listeners. Come and tell us. Come and get it off your chest. Yeah, and like, look, as always, if any of you have a subject you'd like to come on and talk about, hit us up. We welcome guests. I don't know why I went really into the mic for that and what I was going to do was so I was in the habit of whispering. We welcome guests. And what I did was I just shouted into the microphone. I'm so sorry. No, That's a technical error. You didn't shout, actually. That was all right. You kept it at a decent Thank level. God. Oh, <laughs> Lovely. And on that, <laughs> on that note, guys. Ah, right, yeah, look, let's know. Um, yeah, if you seriously, if you've got anything you want to talk about, we are absolutely here for it. Yeah. We want to know. Hit us and up. we're happy to have you on. Look, you can't complain about the content, which they're not to be fair, but you can't complain about the content if you're not telling us. If you're not contributing to, to the content. Absolutely. So start contributing, fuckers. I mean, I would say this. We still love you. Yeah. And we want you to feel safe. And we want you to feel non-judged. We want you to tell us, you know, maybe... Look, you like the Princess we, Diaries. They know we don't kink shame. 
it maybe it's a kink that you're, is your guilty pleasure. Tell us. Share. Because I don't know about you, Andrew, but I feel pretty good after sharing. I do. Sharing is I caring. feel better after this episode. I feel good that I've I shared. I feel good. I, f- I feel like no one can use Princess Diaries against me now. It's not a dirty Why would they? Anne Hathaway is a talent. She's a Mate, damn treasure. She is filth. I'm sorry. I, see, I don't like the way you said that. Would you? I don't see very... <laughs> Couldn't get through the episode. You couldn't. Like you got so close. You, I mean, we're literally on she the. W- is we're wrapping it up. A phenomenally beautiful woman. Now you're covering your tracks. She's 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 talented. I mean, she is really talented. By the she way, is she really is really talented. talented. Um, she's one yeah. of them. I reckon she's one of them annoying people that's just good at everything they do. Yeah. I reckon she's like, you go around her ha- around her family. Or, no, not like that. <laughs> I reckon you go around her house for for the holidays or whatever. And someone's like, oh, let's play a game of this. And she's never played it before. And she immediately wins. becomes fucking phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, she's one of them people. Yeah, I think that's fair. So guys, we love you lots. Share her. Goodbye. Share with us. And share us. Yes, do share us. Goodbye. Bye.